Hey everyone, um, it's been a while. Um, my life's been in a constant turmoil of constantly moving. Uh, so I just finished school and now I am currently in Wisconsin. So yeah, I moved. Um, my whole career, has, my whole professional career has been a little crazy in the past couple of months, but I'm a little bit settled down. So I'm kind of into making a little bit of videos during my free time. Now that I'm actually starting professional work with a company now. <clears throat> so anyways, um, let's get started. So uh, I wanted to go over, I was scripting uh, a kind of pattern that I was thinking of today, uh, just in my free time. And I I came across a Dispatch. Uh, that's where it's located. I don't know if you can see that, but it's located in Sets. And I got Dispatch over here. But <clears throat> anyway, so... I thought it'd be a good idea since I'm really big into list manipulation on my channel. I wanted to really show how this would work or how to use it as well. So let's go and kind of explore what this does. So if we look at this component, this is curve middle. Um, I was getting, I wanted to get the center points of each one of the, the kind of midpoint of each one of these curves. So the normal way I would do it, if we tuck this to the side, uh, normally what I would do with this is I would take that and then just do an evaluate curve and then uh, reparameterize it and then add a 0 0.5 uh, probably not a slider since I'm not changing it it's a static number and I would have those midpoints and then what I would do is I just do a list item and add each one of these in right so then you have all those curves in there all these kind of midpoints and then you can choose from which one you want so for example if I hide everything um, and then get these points up I'll keep the curves on here so if I have this what I would be doing here is like okay so now I'm thinking one two and three four five six uh, actually one two three four five yeah six okay I'm just making sure I just pick a point and I turn this off and I would be like, okay, I want this point, or this one, 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 et cetera. But there's an easier way to do this. So what if I wanted only, let's say every other point. So it's kind of like a call pattern in a way. So I could do this one and then this one and then this one, this one, then this one, this one. But for example, I could do, in this case, a call pattern um, with the dispatch. So the dispatch, what it does is it sorts them all out into two separate lists. So if I have two different panels and put them together, um, they're listing two different sets of data. But if you hover over it, um, it says 75 locally defined values and the same thing here because there's a total of six of, on each one. So let's go back to this before we use dispatch. So for example, instead of this, instead of using dispatch, you could use call pattern. Now I want to say this real quick before I start doing all these different various methods. <clears throat> Each one of these methods is not inherently wrong. These are all technically a way to approach this for the solution. But they are sometimes where these kind of components are the most optimal solution. <clears throat> so this solution right here isn't wrong per se. So I'll group this. This could be labeled method, method number one. Oh God, I, I don't know what's going on there. But anyways, method one, this could be method two. So let's say I wanted to get each one of these points, this one, and then this one, and then this one. So it's going to, True, false, true, false. I don't have my drawing component on me uh, on this computer, uh, but that's what I am thinking of doing. So if I took this, I have a call pattern, and I would just now define it. One, zero, multi-line data, plug in here, and then you get those points. Um, you get those points, let me see. So now if we plug in line into the data, we should get those kind of curves right here. So if I connected 
the center point. So if I wanted to draw a line between here and here, here and here and here and here, this would work. So this is method one. Let me actually ungroup this and actually finish it. Okay, I just grouped it twice. Uh, ungroup. Uh, ungroup. So what happens is I would just do line here. This is method one. I would just do this and then the area. And then now I know it's zero. This one, then this one. So I know it's not this one, it's this one. And then same thing here, not this one, but this one. So this is method one. And let me change the color. That color is yucky. I don't know what I was thinking about with this color. That's, that's pretty. Um, <clears throat> so this is method one. So method one. So method two is this. Oh shoot. Uh, how do I do this? Make color default. Okay, cool. This is method two. <clears throat> so see, the results are the same. It's just a bit more optimized, and it takes a lot less thinking. If you saw what I was doing is I was clicking, I was like, okay, it's this one, but not this one, and this one, skip this one. So this one is a bit more optimized. You don't have to really think about it as much. While this one, instead of doing, so this is with a evaluate curve. So instead I used a pufferfish component, um, curve middle. Um, you can also use uh, evaluate curve. So there's nothing wrong with either one. You'll get the same exact result. Um, yeah, you'll get the exact same result. It doesn't change. So either one of these is correct. I just decided to use evaluate curve. Uh, you can do a lot of different things um, to get the midpoint. You could do point on curve if you really wanted to. Point on curve to get that midpoint as well. Uh, you, it's a bit more, I want to say it's a bit more flexible. You kind of change it around a bit, the patterning, but you can also do it with the parameters as here as well. Uh, so, yeah, let me move this back here. Anyways, so what dispatch does is it basically, with the call pattern, the disadvantage of that is what happens if you need the data from here, here, and here. With call pattern, you would have to, so if you want to replicate this dispatch, what you would have to do is actually do another call pattern, plug it in here. You can actually plug this into here and do a invert. Or is it reverse? I think it's reverse, my bad. Invert and then line and then start to area. So you see? Same thing for this. So if I wanted to have the data for all these points, I'm only drawing this line to visualize these lines to visualize. But uh, if you want to do the same thing on the method one, for example, you would have to do all this. You see where this is going? So now you have to really actually think about each one of these points. So you have to be a little bit more careful. Um, where's area over here? So you actually have to really pay attention to what you are plugging into these components as well. <clears throat> so you see this requires a, t a lot more components than this one, for example. So this one is a bit messy. As you can see, the script is very messy. It has a list item and has a bunch of other stuff. One, two, three, four, five, six. While this one is called pattern, it's a lot cleaner. You have a call pattern here. You've got the lines here, going from here, here, and the lines going from here and here. Now, with dispatch, it puts all this into kind of one component, except for these lines, of course. So it takes these two call patterns and puts it into one component. Um, this batch is also already true and false. 
So it already has a one, one, zero. It already has a one, zero, so you don't need to plug one in. But with the call pattern, you can change that around. And so you see that dispatch comes out with these two kind of empty points, these kind of two lists. Sorry, my bad. I was clearing my throat. So with these two is you have list A and list B. So what do these exactly do? All right. So now I was thinking, what, what does this do? So the easiest thing to do is always put a panel on there. So what I did was I put the panel on each one of these and checked out what it did. Um, and then I realized it just all it does is puts a call pattern for each one of these. So all the quote unquote if you look at this as true and false, one and zero are true. One is true and zero is false. So all the tr it puts all of these trues, all of these true factors into here, and all of these false components into here. Does that make sense? So if this is useful for if you still need that data, if you don't need that data, you can just use a call pattern and go on your merry way with these lines. But if you need to go back and use both sets of data for some reason, this is useful to have just in case. You never know when you may need to switch up the pattern or if you're doing different different uh, manipulations with these other lines that I have shown um, here, here, and here, you may actually need to use those. So for example, I was doing a quick little pattern here. So you see that each one of these achieves the same result, but in a very different way. <clears throat> and this is what I think is useful. What's useful about this patch is it retains that data while keeping it pretty compact, at least in terms of canvas space. So you still have the two lines here. So this is method one, method two, this one seems a bit larger, obviously, because I, um, I just sh I was just showing off like how this works, and it takes up a lot of space. Uh, but I I fully believe that the dispatch is a bit more of a quicker method. C even says dispatch targets for false values, and dispatch target for true values. So it will put all the true values in list A, and all the false values in list B. So that is how the dispatch works. Three different methods for one different for for all the same results. All of these produce the same thing, but one one or two of them are a bit more optimal and a little bit easier for the for you to understand. Instead of doing all this, you could just do a dispatch. Because in this case, if I wanted to separate each one of these out, I would have to kind of group them or merge them or you know, do some sort of weird layer, and that's layering thing or listing, uh, kind of like relisting certain things, and that would be a really annoying thing. So if I merge, merge, and then merge. So if I had that, then it would be very annoying. It, it would just be like this is this this has a lot of room for error, is what I'm getting at. So this versus this doesn't have much room for error because it's listing it in that's already the order that you want it to be. Listing it in one, two, three. And that's pretty much it. Um, this was a pretty <clears throat> short video, under, under 20 minutes. I'm a bit of a rambler, my bad. Uh, but I really wanted to explain this and under give you guys a little bit more of an advanced way of doing list manipulation in kind of quote unquote real life cases because this is for a project of mine that I'm doing and I really wanted to show this off. Um, and maybe it would help someone out understand what dispatch is as well and why use dispatch as well. Because we have all these kind of tools and components but we don't really know why to use them or when to use them or even how to use them. So I hope this really helps out. Thank you guys for watching. I uh, hope to make some more videos uh, if I have time. Um, I'm pretty busy now, but I will try to come around to make some more videos.
to you.